After reading the comments on my last video where I fixed some bad music production and mixing advice, it's quite clear to me that more people wanted me to cover more topics, and there's been some really good ones suggested. Today we're going to talk about EQ, specifically high pass filters and how they can allegedly destroy your music. So for a little bit of context, for many years audio engineers have been sharing the good advice that gentle high passing or using low shelf filters on some of your tracks might help you achieve a clearer, louder mix. And this is true if tracks have inaudible or unwanted low frequency content. So the protocol has always been to use gentle filters, linear phase if preferred, and usually no higher than 20 to 30 hertz, unless it's a very uh, treble focused instrument or vocal, and then maybe you could high pass a little higher. So maybe the vocal microphone was picking up some low hum, or maybe your drum microphone doesn't need the sub bass bleeding into it, or maybe your lead synth was actually misbehaving and generating some super low frequency noise or hum. The idea is that these filters help you address that problem. Now this technique has been used by engineers for decades, and for good reason, because it actually works. The bad advice that I've seen shared in loads of clips, videos, and posts is that using high pass filters like this completely destroys the phase of your mix, especially the low end. These arguments look so compelling because they show completely altered waveforms and they'd leave you just thinking, okay, that's it, I'm never touching a high pass filter again. So I'll show you why these look so compelling, but also why it's really nothing to worry about. So let's get into a few examples here. So when you apply a filter on a track like this, it does remove the low frequencies, but it also has to make a phase shift at or around the cutoff to achieve this, unless you're using a linear phase filter. So it's not that the bad advice is completely incorrect, it's just that they then blow this right out of proportion, and I'll show you why in a minute. So I'll start with a worst case scenario, which is a very subby kick drum that I've synthesized. Let's go too high, so I'll high pass at 30 hertz, well into the audible range, and I'll pick a very steep filter, the resulting waveform looks visibly different. If I superimpose the two, you can see that the waveforms don't line up, so there's definitely been a shift of phase. And if we take a listen before and after, you'll probably be able to hear a difference too. Because this bass drum had so much sub bass, I can definitely hear a difference on my large monitors here. Depending on what you're monitoring, there might be less of a change. So let's push this even further, just make it ridiculous. So a 40 hertz cut will make it very steep. Again, not linear phase. And the resulting waveform is nothing like the original. It's completely changed, warped out of uh, position. And if we take a listen, of course there's gonna be a large change in sound, especially in the sub bass. When you see examples like this, it would be so easy to conclude that high pass filters are just ruining the low end and you should stay well away from them. But it's just the same as someone saying, I'm never gonna use vocal compression because when I compressed my vocals by 40 or 50 dB, they sounded distorted and squashed and unnatural. It's just taking something and pushing it way too far. So let's try some more reasonable examples. This time I'll set the filter to, let's say 15 hertz. Again, you wouldn't even need to do this because you actually want all the sub bass here. But let's set the filter to 15 hertz and export the results. And this time you can see that the waveforms look much more similar. And when I superimpose them, you can see just the smallest shift of phase that's not gonna be causing a problem on this sample. I've got just one more example before I give you a listening test where you can actually decide which one you think is the before and after, but this time we're gonna do a linear phase filter. Again, I'm gonna set it far too high for this sample, so 20 hertz, I'll make it very steep, and let's look at the resulting audio. This time, where the sample is, is almost identical. It's very difficult to see a difference, there's a slight change at the start, and only when I boost the sample by, say, 25, 30 dB, you can see there is some pre-ringing on the sample, which is something to look out for with linear phase filters. In this case, it's not gonna be audible, when we play back the samples. That bass drum sample was just to prove a point, but I know it's pretty boring. So we're gonna move on to a full mix that'll be a lot more musical and interesting. What I'm gonna do is apply a high pass filter and I'll switch between the processed and unprocessed one. I'm not gonna tell you which is first and which is second. And the first person who can guess correctly which has the high pass applied and which doesn't, and give me your reasoning why, you'll win my plugin and all of my preset packs. Good luck.
So if you can tell me which A or B was high passed or the original, just let me know in a comment down below. And as a final note, there are plenty of videos that will use Plugin Doctor to show you how these sorts of filters and processors change the phase relationship of your tracks and how this is going to ruin your music. Now, Plugin Doctor is a good plugin. I use it for troubleshooting misbehaving stuff, but never to inform creative decisions. If you're using Plugin Doctor to inform the sort of EQ curve that you're going to apply to a track, I think you might be drifting off course a little bit and there's probably a lot of other things to prioritize. You know, I wouldn't be without my bit meters and spectrums when I'm mastering, but they just don't have a place in the music production and creative process, at least in my books. So to answer the question, can high passing ruin your music? Yes, of course it can. Just like any effect, if you overdo it and abuse it, it could make your music sound objectively or subjectively worse, but if you're using some low shell filters, which are much more gentle on the phase, or some gentle high pass filters to clear up a couple of tracks here and there, you've really got nothing to worry about unless you can hear a negative audible difference. And I see this sort of thing crop up in all different sectors of YouTube where people can sort of create a problem out of thin air that you didn't know you had and make you worry about something, but you've got to be wary about things that pop up you never knew they were a problem, you weren't at all worried about them, and then you find yourself focusing, obsessing, or stressing over it, it's usually something that you need to walk away from and try to see the bigger picture. So I really hope this is the last time I address this in a YouTube video. If anyone asks me about this, I'm just gonna send them right here. I hope the takeaway from this is just about anything you do to your music will have a bigger impact than applying these gentle filters. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Hopefully it'll be much sooner had a very busy month, it's been a good one, I've made some changes in the studio, I've got on with a lot of mastering jobs, but I sort of put YouTube on the back burner. So hopefully I'll have the next video out a little bit sooner, and I'll see you there. Bye for now.